Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I have another special guest. It is my pleasure to welcome Charlotte Stewart, who played Ruth Collier in the very first Waltons episode, The Foundling. She also went on to play Miss Beetle on Little House on the Prairie. So we're going to talk about uh, the Waltons, Little House, and other things about Charlotte's career and life. Please welcome Charlotte Stewart. Welcome, Charlotte. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming to join me to talk with um, all of our wonderful Walton viewers. Well, it's always good to see you, and I, it's, it's always a nice surprise to see Little House on the Prairie and the Waltons come together. Yes, so true. We have so many crossover fans, and we had so many crossover actors. Uh, it's amazing to me. I I watched some of Little House, but I didn't follow it every week. And so I wasn't aware of how many actors who did episodes of The Waltons also did episodes of Little House. Yeah. Which makes sense, you know, two similar family oriented shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, of course, on The Waltons, you did what was our very first episode that aired. Now, right. The Foundling was not the very first episode that we filmed, but for some reason, uh, I think they saw the first few episodes and decided what they thought was the strongest episode to lead with. Well, it really so. showed the Waltons as a giving, loving family. You know, the way they took in the little deaf girl and, you know, kind of helped her so much. So that was, uh, I just watched it recently um, and I, I'd forgotten certain aspects of it. Um, especially when the kids were, you know, trying to find her when she was lost. And, you know, anyway, it was a, it was a wonderful episode to be involved in. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, well, just then tell me what you what your experience was, what you remember about it, uh, what you noted now looking back after all these years. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what it was. You know, it, it had not hit the air yet. Um, so it was brand new to me. Everybody was new to me. Um, I really didn't, I didn't know anybody and everybody was so giving. I didn't work with the Waltons cast very much until the very you know last scene. Um, uh, so I, I didn't know anybody and I didn't really know until I saw the show on the air, what the whole family dynamic was. And it was powerful. You know, later on, when you saw at Little House on the Prairie, when you saw, you know, how Pa was the was the the patriarch and how he guided the family and took care of everybody. And but the Walton started that, you know, mm. so I, I really appreciate it. it was the first show that was, you know, it wasn't about blood and guts or murder or car chases or guns or anything. It was a family and it was a family the way it was at that period. So um I, it was wonderful. It's a great experience. Oh, good. I'm 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 glad. Uh, I hear that a lot. Maybe it's just that the only people who agree to come on are people who had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> now, who wouldn't have a good time on the Waltons? <laughs> we really did try to create a um, uh, a welcoming set, and and the whole tone was set very early, and uh, that because I think we all got along so well, and uh, so that it was already a happy set. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was easy to extend that to, uh, to anybody coming in. Um, you mentioned how you felt the episode really showed the dynamics of the family. And I think that was part of maybe why they, they chose this episode to lead with. Uh, we also had shot I think it was the second or third episode that we filmed. Maybe it was the second. So we'd had a little bit of chance to start forming what this new family unit was, because of course, Ralph Wade and Michael Learned and Will Gear were not in the homecoming. So there was a little bit of let's, let's find our way with this new family. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Ah, so you hadn't had a chance to see the homecoming. That's your homework, Charlotte. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just right on it. <laughs> When I was doing that show, I was also working on a film um, for David Lynch called Eraserhead, which couldn't be more dynamically opposite of the Waltons. 
So I had been all all night. I he only worked after midnight. Oh so wow! I hope that his fans know that. But when we were shooting Eraserhead, it was from midnight till six in the morning, and my call was at like six. So I had to leave the shooting, come directly to was it Warner Brothers? Yes, it was, it was Warner Brothers uh, from Beverly Hills, and <laughs> I was completely upside down. It was very confusing for me because I was like sleep deprived and I apologize if I was all over the place. Oh. It couldn't have been totally as different. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to do that. I mean, you're show you this. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I just got back from Dallas, Texas for a Lynch festival just night before last. So Wow. And of course you I I eraser head, I understand. I looked I looked it up a bit. Clearly sort of a a real cult film that <laughs> yeah. um, has its its staunch followers. I'm not sure how many of our Walton viewers have have seen it. I I confess <laughs> I have not, but uh, I did watch um, then tw uh, Twin Peaks. I I quite enjoyed. That was yeah. kind of a, a quirky. Was it the beginning of a new I feel genre in, uh -huh. in television that then spawned shows like X Files and yeah, you know, it was around a little bit time. on the dark side, just yeah, just, you know. But then yeah. there was Betty Briggs. You know, <laughs> she always had a smile on her face, and you know, had something good to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have over the course of your quite extensive work history. You you would initially I was looking um, and you worked on a lot of the, a lot of classic TV shows around the time of the Waltons and before yeah. the you know the, the westerns the family show. shows yeah. yeah the Virginia and Hawaii Five O My Three Sons Bonanza Gunsmoke Matlock you know <laughs> Barnaby Jones Ken and then so you had all of those sorts of things I was looking at and then of course you did the family stuff you did the Waltons and you did Little House and you did Eight is enough, and I'm cheat. I have my cheat sheet here. And oh, highway to heaven, coach. Those wouldn't pop right to my head. So. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> so you kind of spanned a lot of genres of of work. Did you have a favorite genre or a favorite sort of role to play? I didn't have a favorite. Sometimes the parts that they would, you know, have me do was totally a surprise to me. You know, especially like a racer head when I started doing that. I hadn't got a clue what it was about. And, you know, David was all kind of vague, but he was very specific in his direction. So when people, you know, say, oh, Eraserhead and Little House on the Prairie, <laughs> you know, there couldn't be two more different shows or Eraserhead and the Waltons. So I was offered a lot of different things. Sometimes I was the victim. Sometimes I was a hero. In fact, I went to visit with my mother um, just before she passed away. And it happened. I had two shows on that night mm. on this, and they were on the same channel. It was FBI and medical center Two, two, you know, but they were on the same network. So one came on right after the, it was a total surprise to me because I had done them at, you know, different times, but in those days you, you brought your own wardrobe, you know, they would say, you know, we want you in a this and a that. And so turns out I was wearing, exactly the same jacket in both episodes <laughs> one i was a heiress a blind heiress and the other i was the victim uh and i was in a bus bus accident from a prison and i'm wearing the same coat <laughs> my mother got a good laugh about that <laughs> i love that i love that uh so talk for a moment jumping back to the waltons here about about the character of Ruth Collier and the and the the daughter, the little your your little deaf daughter. Um, I know we all learned a little bit of sign language in order to do the episode. Um, did was there anything in particular that you had to do? No, they were very ignorant about her 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 uh, problem. You know her hearing problem. That's why they she the mother tried to make sure she was taken care of by a good family because she's obviously watched them for a while. And her husband was completely, didn't want anything to do with it. Just, you know, get, you know, get rid of her or it was awful. 
So she had to sneak around the Walton's house, try to find the right time to leave her daughter at their doorstep and then come back and watch. But they were uneducated. They were uneducated people. Uh, I'm sure the mother loved her daughter very, very much, but she couldn't help her. She didn't know what was wrong with her. She thought maybe, you know, some kind of mental disability or something. And that's why she left her with the Waltons, because she saw what a kind and loving family it was. And then, of course, she saw what they were doing, you know, that they were helping her. And no, her, the parents never knew sign language, didn't even, weren't educated enough to, you know, even look into it. So we were totally helped. The mother was totally helpless. At least yeah. That's the interpretation. Well, it, it seems like, as you mentioned, from that era where these were very simple, very sort of backwoods people, uh, Ruth was kind and, and caring, but it was a different, if it was a different era and her husband was very domineering. Mm -hmm. So she was a little bit, as was often the case that the, the husband sort of set the tone and set the rules and she was a bit victimized and had to, had to sort of go along, even if she didn't agree because she was a little for herself. Yeah. Do you remember was the father in the house at the end when they were showing the mother that she had learned sign language? I couldn't I couldn't remember if he was if he was there or not. Yeah, he I was wondering about that. We did have that opportunity to have that wonderful sort of Walton ending where mm -hmm. uh, the father had an opportunity to find out that his daughter wasn't ignorant or yes. or had, have a mental you know, some sort of mental challenge, which is what he thought that she was slow or simple. He was the one that was slow and simple. Yeah. yeah. But then he had a chance to see her interacting with the Waltons and realize that uh, it was, it was something different and that he could learn. And so, yes, there was a lovely moment there where he accepted her again and realized that he had this wonderful daughter. So yeah, it was, it was sweet. And it was, it was a good representation of, the family. I so enjoyed working on that show. I mean, the, you guys were all such a, a you know, you you integrated quite quickly being a family. You know, I know I'm sure on the on the original pilot episode, you were all kind of getting to know each other, and you know, had been doing a lot of shows before that. But um, I really enjoyed that you clicked right into a family. You know, immediately. Yeah, the, I think the five weeks that most of us had filming the homecoming really gave us that opportunity before the series started you were only briefly on the walton set but how was it how did you find the little house set to the work? little house set was of course i only worked with the children there mm. were, I, I had only one or two scenes the entire four years outside of the school so those were my friends and you know who became my best friend allison arngram mm. who played nelly she and i actually traveled together um but she she was the only one I really connected with. Um, everybody, it was just you know, the adults were with the adults, and the children were with the children, and I was right in between, you know. So I really didn't get to mix that well. But since um, you know, we all travel now so much, we get to know each other, and and uh, um, I really appreciate that. I love staying in touch. Did Michael Landon direct any of the episodes that you did? Oh, yes. He directed He directed about every third uh, episode. We had two other directors that were, you know, quite good. Um, but it was, you know, Michael was on set every day, of course. He's a producer, writer, star, you know, mm. everything. And the, the um, atmosphere, as I'm sure on your show, was quite relaxed. You know, he Michael liked to be home in time for dinner, you know. Before Little House, when I did all those other shows, um, you work until seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, and then you're in at six in the morning. You just don't have, I didn't have a family then, but don't, you don't have family time. Michael wanted his crew to have a family time. Mm. So the way he directed, he, he edited in his head while he was shooting. So he didn't overshoot. We didn't do the master and then cover every single thing. He covered what he's going to edit. So it cut the time down a lot. We were out of there by six o'clock at night. So it was different than any show I had ever worked on. Yeah. You know, they'd work you till 11 at night. And 
you know, you didn't have a life. So uh, I so so great. appreciated that. Plus he was fun on Good. this. It was always, you know, making jokes or doing ho really horrible things that would make you laugh out loud during a shoot or something. I so was sad on my last day. They told me when they cast me that I would be on for four years because um, there would be another teacher coming in because El Manzo had to come to town to meet Laura Ingalls so she could become Laura Ingalls Wilder. And uh, so I knew my time was going to be up. Mm. It made me very sad. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I bet. Um, I spoke with um, Sissy Wellman recently. I don't know if you if you know. Uh, no, I've known Sissy for years. Okay. Yeah. So Sissy talked about her father, director William Wellman, that he was similar when he was filming that he wanted to be home with his family for dinner. So when he filmed, same thing, he would things would wrap up by whatever, five, six o'clock, so he could be home with his family for dinner. Um, I know that on our show, although we didn't, we usually wrapped somewhere around 6.30 or 7 because we had so many children and um, they could only, usually 6.30 was the latest we could work, depending on what yeah. time we'd come in. Yeah. So I, I think the, a lot of the crew would say they liked working on our show because they knew that it would be, a reasonably early wrap time for the day. And so they could. I was lucky those. because I worked with my, mainly the children. So they could only work so many hours a day. So I, I, once they were out, I was out usually. So that was an advantage to playing a teacher on a series because they were, they were either in school or they had to go home at a certain time. So right. that, that was good. As long as you were on the show um, and you were, it, approaching adulthood while you were you know playing the part did you get involved in the story writing or did you suggest stories for you know for the episodes no we weren't uh we weren't given much input from that perspective the only time um i voiced something that seemed to um have been implemented was I went to Earl Hamner at one point this was after Mary Ellen had become a nurse but then after I got married and had John Curtis then I was around a lot and I wasn't and Kurt was killed so I was kind of around the house not doing much and so I went to Earl at one point and I said you know what I loved about playing Mary Ellen early on was that she was this sort of non-conformist and for the era she was Sort of ahead of her time shortly after that was when the storyline was initiated about mary ellen deciding to go back to wanting to go back to school to become a doctor which was completely unheard of for women to become doctors yeah. in that era so it was great to have that storyline which then gave me um another strong it's so nice that they were receptive to that yeah it didn't it didn't happen very often i understand there was a lot of characters and a lot to navigate and michael had a similar complaint because she she said all she did was pour coffee and <laughs> and that got boring for her which was you know, she why did she, it so well she did such love <laughs> yes but you know that was one of the key reasons she she has said that she chose not to continue on the show was because she felt that she just wasn't being challenge with storyline she didn't really have anything to do um so yeah, I found michael was yeah. very my, my michael my michael was <laughs> very receptive uh to suggestions hmm. you know, i went to him with a, an idea one time and he actually wrote an episode around it hmm. you know so i i about my character you know i it's all me right it's all about me. <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> no Always. i told him about <laughs> my uh, my godmother was a one room school teacher in Mendocino, California. Oh wow! And, uh, you know that's logging country, and that takes you know all the all the young boys as they were growing up there became you know big and strong because they were helping their dads with the ships and the logs and you know the timber and all of that. So he he wrote an episode where Miss Beetle can't handle them; they were out of control, and she mm. couldn't do it so i get fired mrs olson comes in and that uh is really mean <laughs> so i did have that one experience where michael took the idea and kind of went with it and i you know i did appreciate that 
Well, that's that's cool. Yeah, I, I appreciated it. But I could see you've got a cast of 11 regulars. If everybody was running to Earl every week, I have an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> it could get a little out of control. Yeah, really, you got to <laughs> bar the door. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I don't recall other times. And maybe I just didn't make suggestions. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I was pretty I was pretty lucky that I, I got involved with some other shows after Little House on the Prairie. You know, I was I went on to do Twin Peaks, which was um, David Lynch series, not not quite the Waltons or Little House followers. Right. But it was interesting because it was a, it was a family and it was a little town. Yeah. So, you know, we did that. I did Tremors um, with Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward about the worms under the ground, you know. Yeah. That was fun. And there was nine versions of Tremors. I did two of them. So it was nice to be able to do something, you know, a little different, you know. So Yeah. Well, you you have. I mean, I was I was glancing just briefly at your your biography, your resume was so long. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going to remember all this, but you know, you you've had this um you've just been a, a working actor. You're I have. I've been, life. I've been very lucky. And I wrote a book too. In the book I wrote, it came out in 2016. It's still selling. I, I, just, I can't believe it. You know, what but, is what is the book so people can find it? The book is called Little House in the Hollywood Hills, <laughs> a bad girl's guide to becoming Miss Beetle. So I kind of wrote it's my life story in getting involved in, you know, moving to Hollywood at 17 and and working on a variety of things. And, and the people I met and the shows I did and the friends I made and the husbands I had. <laughs> Somebody said to me one day, you should write a book. And I said, I barely got out of high school. I don't know how to write a book. And he said, no, don't write a book. Tell us stories. Mm. So that's what my book is. My book is stories. Oh, great. Know. Great. Said, is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon. It's on. Yeah. And there's an audio version as well audio.com carries it. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. I had a lot of encouragement doing it. I was terrified to, you know, it, it took us a while to get it published because it different, you know, publishers, but there's a couple of, you know, publishers that do like um, stories from people who have been in show business. So I was lucky about that. So that's cool. Anyway, it's fun. If if fans want to, is there a way that they can reach out to you or find out, keep track of what you're doing? Or yeah, if I if they post on Facebook, um, sometimes I mean it'll always get to me. I'm very good at answering, and um, you can write. You can you can go on Facebook and just say Beetle Bags. I call them Beetle Bags because they're usually Miss Beetle pictures or pictures from Little House on the Prairie. And I sew every day. I have a workroom that I, that's where I get off my energy, you know, and I go in and make a beetle bag. I, I saw some of those. You had those at, um, at the autograph show that we were at yeah. in, in Illinois. Yeah. And they're, yeah, very creative. And, you know, I, they probably make great gifts. So people should, should order ahead because obviously each one is custom made. That's right. I make them myself one at a time, no two alike. I'm so happy that we that we had that opportunity to see each other in Illinois and that it has led to this opportunity to, to visit for a little bit. Well, and I, I know the I fans always love. <laughs> the offer to meet with you again. And I please stay in touch with me and I will stay in touch with you. So I've got your email now, let you know what's going on and you know, where we're going to be and where we're going to see each other next. Absolutely. I want to thank Charlotte very much for coming and being my guest here today. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy and more special guests. Thanks for watching.